Welcome to Logic Heap friends. In the last tutorial, we covered introduction to data structure. And in this tutorial, we are going to cover a prerequisite for further videos, which is understanding big O notation. So we are not going to deal with the theory in this tutorial. We'll only cover practical usage of big O notation. So the next question that comes to our mind is why we need to study big O notation at this point. Because soon we are going to learn data structure further. To compare those data structures and to see how fast we can do any operation on a particular data structure, it is important to understand big O notation. In the previous tutorial, I emphasized on two keywords. What were those? Your algorithm, your operation, your steps should be quick. And second thing is, it should be storage efficient. So operations slash steps slash algorithms that you are writing on data structure should be as quick and storage efficient as possible. Now to quantify, how to quantify that my operation that I have done on any particular data structure, it is very quick and it is very storage efficient, right? So how to quantify this quickness and storage efficiency? So here comes the role of big O notation, which helps us to quantify it. Okay, so now we are clear why we are uh, studying big O notation to compare different operations on data structure, how much time these operations are going to take. Now the next thing is, why at all time efficiency matters. So even in the previous slide, I said operations or your algorithms or steps, whatever you are writing, it needs to be quick. But why? Let's say you visit a booking website, uh, a flight booking website, and you immediately get your bookings done like seamlessly. This is because some good or quick algorithm is running behind the scene, which is making ultimately the customers also happy. So that's why time efficiency really matters. Now consider one more example. Suppose you have 100 numbers which are already sorted. Don't think programmatically, just think you have 100 numbers written somewhere which are already in the sorted order in ascending way. Now you need to find particular number if that number is present or not. What we can do, we can start scanning from the very first number we'll see if this is equal to the what i'm searching no i'll go to the next number so this is called linear searching I, i'm going to the each number and i'm checking if it is equal to the value which i'm trying to find now if there are only 100 numbers it is completely fine now let's say i have, I have increased the set of numbers to 1 billion earlier there were only 100 numbers now there are 1 billion numbers Again, those are sorted and we need to find a particular number's presence. Now, linear searching will look very time consuming to you, right? Because if you are going to scan the complete list, complete list of numbers, it is going to take a lot of time. So, we should think of a better approach to solve this problem. So, that's how time efficiency matters. If I would say one thought that you should take away from this slide, just read the last line, your approach may look fine at smaller set of problem, but when you scale your set, efficiency starts mattering. So as you will increase your set of problem, the input size, then efficiency really matters. Otherwise, it will lead to a slow and dull performance. Okay. so. Enough said about the importance of big O notation. Next thing is, what is big O notation? As we have already discussed, big O notation helps us to get the performance, to understand the performance of algorithm, to compare performance of algorithm. And if I say the definition of big O notation, it is, it measures how quickly the runtime increases relative to the input. So, I am increasing the input size. So, just like uh, earlier I have 100 numbers and I wanted to search a number. Now, I have 1 billion numbers. So, I am increasing the input size. How the runtime is increasing? This is what big O notation gives. 
okay once more it measures how quickly the runtime increases relative to the input how does it look how do we pronounce it you can read it as big o of 1 order of 1 next is order of log n similarly order of n order of n square and order of n cube these are the examples how do we write big o notation any algorithm whose runtime is fixed or any operation you are doing whose runtime is fixed even when you increase the size of the input is called as order of one so let me give you some example to clarify my point first example is suppose we have a list of 10 elements and you need to replace the 10th element with some number let's say by 100 so what you will write l of 9 assigns 100 this is how you will do it in python right l9 equals to 100 now even if you scale this input size to 100 elements to 1000 elements or 10000 elements it will take the constant time to replace the 10th element so this ex so this is the example of order of 1 another example is when you assign value to a variable this statement this step this is called order of 1 this is going to take the fixed amount of time whether you increase the size of the input or decrease the size of the input always always it is going to take the constant amount of time okay so this is called order of one or big o of one if you see it graphically it is something like you are on the x-axis i have uh, plotted input size and on the y-axis i have time so how much i how much I increase the input size doesn't matter. It is going to take the constant amount of time. So next is order of n, big O of n. It is also known as linear time. So this is something like let's first consider the example. You have 10 elements list and you need to print all elements one by one of it. So what you will write in Python for item in L, let's say the name of list is L, for item in L, print item. Right, you can see it here. Now if you increase the size of list to say 100 elements, this loop you will have to print till the size of L. You increase it to 1000 times. Your time required for algorithm also increases with the same amount right now if you move it to 10,000 elements this loop will run for 10,000 times so runtime is increasing by the same amount as the input is increasing so generally a single loop on list where each of this is a single element this is the classic example of linear time to see in the graphical representation as well you have the input size you have the time as you are increasing the input size time is increasing linearly with it this is called linear time next is quadratic time big o of n square so what is happening here let's again see the example let's consider the example first you have list of 10 elements and you want to print those numbers in pair like all the possible combination of two elements okay so what you'll do you need to print all elements one by one so what you'll do you'll write for x in data see these three lines for x in data for y in data print x comma y suppose there are elements as 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 what it is going to print 1 1 1 2 1 3 1 4 till 10 10 so we can say if a linear operation is needed for every value like for first element we are doing it 10 times for the second element we are doing it 10 times for the third element we are doing it 10 times and so on so if a linear operation is needed for every value in the input data this is this is going to take quadratic time n into n is n square now as you you are going to increase the size of your list from 100 thousand 10 thousand your uh, time complexity your run time is going to increase by quadratic amount of time so this is big o of n square 
if you see its graphical representation as you are going to increase the input size the time is going to increase tremendously right if you will make it order of n cube it is going to go more steep so what do you understand by this which algorithm or which operation or which big o complexity we have seen till now which one was the best the first that we saw which is big o of 1 then comes order of n then comes order of n square but there are some which i have missed let's read those so big o of log n is another time complexity that we should know of for this you should know the concept of log what how does it work so in a single line if i need to make you understand what is logarithms so 2 power 10 is equals to 1024 we know that right so it is the same as writing log 1024 base 2 is equals to 10 okay so it's like what should be the power of 2 to make it 1024 so if input size is n you must be getting log n is something which is faster than this if input size is n log n algorithms will be considered very fast it would be somewhere between big o of 1 and big o of n it is faster than big o big o of n so maybe it could be a little difficult for you to digest log n that's why i'm uh, i'm going to explain you with the example of binary search suppose you have n numbers and let's take n is equals to 16 here now you have a list of size n which is 16 it is already sorted in ascending order what you need to do again you need to find a value out of it uh, let's say value 65 okay this is the typical example of log n complexity big o of log n order of log n so let's see how does this work now you have 16 elements and they are already in sorted order so what you'll do is you'll compare the mid element what is the mid element currently it's 83 of this list and you'll see if this is equal to 65 no it is not equal to 65 right so where could 65 be it could be in the below part of your list not in the upper part like not after 83 because 65 is smaller and is a sorted list so you'll get it below 83 you'll completely strip off the remaining portion of your list and you'll only keep the below part of your list again now n is equals to 8 it, is, it got divided by 2 now again you'll look for 65 and you'll compare it with the middle element which is 45 i mean at index 4 you have 45 you'll see it is not equal to 65 but 65 is going to be greater than 45 so you'll keep the upper half of this list now n is equals to 4 the middle element is at index 2 so which is 70 so now 70 is greater than 65 so you are going to keep the below part of your list now you have only two elements 45 and 65 you'll simply see if 65 is present at at the first index so yes 65 is equals to 65 it got matched and you got the number you were searching for so now see how many steps it took one two three four so 16 was your n 16 was your n base 2 so the answer is 4 so this approach took big o of log n time or order of log n time this is the typical example of binary search i hope now you understand what is it okay now there are some points so uh, we have gone through all the basic uh, big o notations order of one order of log n order of n square uh, order of n cube now there are some points which you need to understand first thing is there's no need to consider multiple statement loops so what do i mean by it suppose you have a script written right what that script is doing you have 10 elements a list of 10 elements now for 
you are now you are going to print each item in one loop and there is one more loop after it where you are appending 5 or you are adding 5 to all those items. So, what do you think? What what would I say? What is the time complexity or total time it is going to take to run? What is the time complexity of this whole program? What should I say? Is it order of n plus order of n? Like order of 2n? No. It's simply order of n. So, you may think for the first loop, the complexity is order of n, right? Linear time. For the second, it is also big O of n. So, what you will do, you will just add those and you will say, uh, okay, the complexity is big O of 2n. No, okay? Just say it's big O of n only. There is no need to multiply it with some constant. Why? Why I am saying this? Because when n becomes very large, it hardly matters, like the difference between n and 2n hardly matters. So, they almost seem same and we just need to have the idea of whether it is linear or quadratic. So, what idea we got? This is linear. Right? So, no need to multiply it with some constant or something. Just say big of n. Also, one more thing. Suppose you have two loops in the program. One is linear. See, the first loop is linear and the second loop is quadratic. Correct? Now, what would you say? Now, what would you say? What is the time complexity of this program? You can say big O of n for the first and big O of n square for the second. So, can I say big O of n plus n square? No need to do this. Just tell the biggest power. Big O of n square. Okay, again the same reason, difference seems to be negligible at higher values of n. So, better to consider only the highest power. So, one very important concept that you should know, what is best case, average case and worst case scenario. Suppose, let's consider it with this example, you have an unsorted list, okay. And again, you need to do a searching operation. You are doing a linear search only not a binary search because it is not sorted. Now, when I say, what is the best case of this? So, best case means if the input is arranged in the best way possible so that the running time is minimum. Okay, that is your best case. So, here, suppose I am going to search for number 56 and 56 is the very first number in the list. So, input is arranged in the best way possible. So, this is called the best case. Now, in the best case, what is the time complexity here to do a search? I would say it is big O of 1 because you simply need to access your first element which would be 56, right? So, this is called the best case. What is average case? If input is average type, when I am saying the average case, in this example, the average case would be when 56 is placed somewhere in the middle of it, somewhere around the middle of the list. This is your average case. Now, what is the worst case here? If the input is arranged in the worst possible way, what is it? If 56 is at the last, what I will have to do? Uh, in the worst case, you will have to scan for all the elements. So, the answer is big O of n. Okay, so in the next tutorial, we are going to start with the data structures as your prerequisites are now done.